Is it possible to change your life with the teachings of a demon? Hold on, not just any demon. This is Screwtape, a character invented by C.S. Lewis in his book, The Screwtape Letters. And stay till the end of this video and we'll show you how this work can change your life. I've included a personal story in this video, and I'd be happy if you watch until it comes up. First, let's understand a bit about who C.S. Lewis was and get to know the book we'll be using throughout this video. C.S. Lewis was a renowned British writer and academic, masterful at weaving together fiction, theology, and literary criticism in a compelling way. He stands out as a prominent figure in 20th century literature, with works that continue to challenge and enlighten readers. One of his most engaging works is The Screwtape Letters, a satirical collection of letters from an experienced demon, Screwtape, to his novice nephew, Wormwood. In this book, Lewis not only explores morality and human nature, but also offers profound insights into temptation and spirituality. Surprisingly, we can find life-changing teachings through the cunning observations of Screwtape. Now that you know about this great writer, let's delve a bit into the perspective of the demon in question. Understanding this is crucial to grasping the impact of this book on ourselves. Screwtape, an experienced demon, views humans primarily as targets for corruption and manipulation. He considers humans as weak and susceptible creatures that can be easily diverted from the path of virtue to that of damnation. Screwtape teaches his nephew Wormwood to exploit human weaknesses such as pride, selfishness, and lack of self-awareness to steer them away from God and true happiness. The demon sees us as pieces in a cosmic game between heaven and hell with his goal being to ensure these souls end up under the domain of hell. After getting to know this fellow, are you intrigued to go to the end? Because now we'll show how Screwtape's letters reveal the true human face and understand how this helps us evolve and not stray from God under any circumstances. One degree distraction and superficiality are indeed great foes. Screw tape points out, indeed, the surest distraction is our best ally. The feeling that there is infinite time to start is extremely reassuring. People often turn to religion seeking salvation, a change of life, or a purpose. However, upon realizing how God loves us unconditionally, they might think, wow, God is wonderful. I can do whatever I want, repent, and be saved. I don't need to stop now. This mindset, believing that we have until the end of our lives to start anew, is a grave mistake. We might think everything will be all right, but in the midst of those plans lies perdition. Perdition can lead us to hell sooner than you might think. In the blink of an eye, choosing a holy worldly life can cost you your entire life. There are things that only happen because you're on the wrong path. Things like overdoses, lung cancer, and heart attacks. Eliminate from your life things that can distract you from your important goals. Do not waste your time preventing yourself from finding peace in God's path. Start today before it's too late. It's still time to change your life. Two degrees, selfishness and pride, as Screwtape notes, play crucial roles in human interactions. When two humans meet, what are the first steps? Each desires to be loved, not for what they are, but for what they prefer to be seen as. In today's world, obsessed with appearances, especially with the omnipresence of social media, people often pride themselves on their attractive bodies or charming looks. Some even believe they are better than others simply because they are in a better situation or have a prestigious profession. Appearances, they deceive, and deceive greatly. Do you know how much effort they put into maintaining appearances? Lewis states that pride can lead to a variety of other sins such as hatred, envy, and lack of charity because when we are proud, 
we care less about others and more about our own image. And for us Christians, pride can be dangerous because it prevents true connection with God. It can cause a person to reject dependence on God and seek their own glory instead of glorifying Him. This is in total contradiction to Christianity, as we should be humble and love our neighbor as ourselves. We can choose to waste time being who people want us to be, or we can be who God wants us to be. Whose opinion really matters to you? Where will selfishness and pride lead you? For Satan, his pride led him straight to hell, and he was the most beautiful and intelligent of the angels in heaven. It's not about what we appear to be or how intelligent we are, but what we do with these attributes. You can pursue knowledge and wealth out of mere caprice, or you can use them for good, for the benefit of others. Even small actions have a big impact. Plant a tree, be kind, be humble, be someone who cares about others. How to make a difference? If you're a police officer, being honest already sets you apart from the corrupt majority. If you're a judge and you sentence those who truly deserve to go to prison, you are making a difference. Like this video and subscribe if you've chosen to make a difference. Three degrees despair and lack of hope play into screw tape strategy as he advises. Teach them to value the pleasure of the present moment above all else. Even if they are desperate, their despair about the current state of things is a weapon in our hands. I've learned that being focused solely on the immediate never brings anything lasting. Even though it might feel good now, seeking instant gratification doesn't build anything. On the contrary, it often demolishes what has already been built. The desperate turn to God for comfort. They wish for all their problems to be solved magically just by going to church and praying. Little do they know that is just the first step. God does His part by loving you, giving you a second chance. But we need to fight daily battles against the things that lead us astray. We need to build our character, atone for our sins, and transform ourselves into what we aspire to be. The desperate and hopeless, driven by their emotions, forget to stop and pray. They neglect to think about what they are doing wrong and to correct what needs to be corrected. Our part must be taken seriously. There are no miracles without change. In Romans 5, 3, 5, it says, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. From this passage, we can understand that the challenges we go through provide what is necessary to continue with hope. Do not despair. Only the desperate will leave this video before it ends, but we have much more to explain about how to change your life. Four Degrees The failure to recognize good and evil, as Screwtape puts it, is a significant achievement for hell. The greatest success of hell was convincing you that it does not exist. The greatest mistake humans make is to believe that their actions will have no consequences. Life is the only one we have, say the foolish, forgetting that their soul is also singular. When we indulge in worldly pleasures, and by this I mean the harmful illusions that deceive humans into thinking they are gaining an advantage over others, we forget that everything in this world is temporary. And they neglect to care for their own existence, their faith, their duty to Christ. This neglect slides them down a slippery slope to hell, or perhaps they are in hell on earth. Do you believe in hell on earth? Some people think that small actions are insignificant, but have you ever considered the harm that a single word can do to someone on the verge of a breakdown? Before you answer that, Understand what drives a person to the edge of the precipice, that inner madness that they would never reach in their sound mind. Unfortunately, there are people who are lost in their lives, and sometimes these individuals enter our lives in some way, creating a chaos 
that we struggle to understand how we got there. To me, this is the true hell on earth, the cowardly manipulation of beings who crawl through the world lost, thinking and acting in their own interest. The next topic will explain this further. Five degrees human relationships and manipulation, as Screwtape amusingly notes, it's funny how mortals always think they are being reasonable and sensible when they are making life intolerable for others. Manipulation has existed since creation, said to have been originated by Lucifer to lead God's beloved humans to eternal perdition. This kind of action, in small doses and done in the right way, can confuse and drive someone to collapse. This happens especially when the person realizes they are being manipulated but can't escape due to being entangled in ties not easily undone, such as a relationship with many shared assets, children, parental opinions, and all while following the doctrines of the scriptures. How to escape something like this when separation isn't an option because there was no betrayal? Hell has many ways of reaching us. Of course, it's not you who will go to hell for having been cruelly manipulated, but the hell you endured through all of this. What advice would you give to someone going through something like this? Feel free to leave your opinion in the comments. We must care for our souls by nourishing them with the words of God. Pray. Ask for patience. Have faith. In any situation beyond our own efforts. And the next topic will help you answer this question more easily. Six degrees spiritual and material life, as Screwtape keenly observes, we can always count on the fact that the truth about spiritual life is forgotten amid the best pleasures and the worst sufferings of life. I'll share my own story here to help illustrate this point. I was once married and I was manipulated in various ways, during our dating, throughout our marriage, and even at the end I was blamed for everything because I didn't end it before it all collapsed emotionally and financially. But during the marriage, we were happy in a way. Things improved when we got better jobs, and I always wanted to own my own house. Seeing everything improving, I believed it was possible. However, when I was earning well, she quit her job on a whim. I had to start covering all the household expenses alone. There wasn't much money left, and what was left went to her desires. I won't lie, when she asked for things, she thought of me but I keep thinking, if we had worked together towards a healthier financial life, wouldn't it have been better? I wonder why people only want to take advantage of others. I don't understand. The feeling of achieving something with your own hands is so gratifying. Back to the story, while I was earning well, it was wonderful, but as my income was variable, it decreased. When I became unemployed, I was the only one who could maintain the house. We returned to our parents' house with the will to rise again, but I was not well. I never missed paying any bills, always paid the credit card, but faced with my situation, I couldn't think of anything else. I had no motivation for anything. I wasn't well, and she didn't think about helping me improve or understand why I was in that state. The relationship continued until I was left. My world turned upside down. I didn't know what to do. That's when I started praying again. I looked for a job. I asked people I knew to pray for me. I got a job as an attendant in a pizzeria and five months later in a retail company that paid much better. I am thankful to this day. I think that everything I overcame was due to everyone's prayers and mine as well. Just so you understand how this story relates to the quote from this topic, during the good times, I no longer prayed, I was too distracted by material things and the daily married life to think about praying. Nowadays, I am very grateful actually, since the end of that relationship. I am grateful for everything in my life. Despite the things that happened, I never went without. I always had my family to help me. My closest friends also took me in, helped me distract myself. I feel blessed. So don't forget to pray, even if it's just to give thanks. God is not only pleased, but
but it also helps to maintain your happiness, to be grateful for what we have regardless of happiness or suffering, we always have something to thank God for. And it's not over yet. There's one last, but not least, topic to discuss. Seven degrees conformity and peer pressure, as Screwtape slyly advises. One of the great aims of life is to avoid situations that force us to be brave. Choosing not to be brave, such cunning advice can only come from a demon. Every day, situations arise in our lives that require us to be courageous. Changes, challenges, moments of weakness, and moments of greatness as well. Maintaining your essence regardless of the situation requires a lot of courage, because abandoning the thrill of excitement and staying faithful to God is not easy. It should be easy, but we are human. Perhaps advising someone not to be brave is the cruelest counsel one could offer. Consider this. At some point in your life, you were off God's path, unwilling to pray, to be a Christian, because it's a life that demands dedication, and change is only for the brave. Leaving a life you are accustomed to and completely comfortable with requires a great deal of courage. Have you been courageous lately? You've been facing things that only you know about, haven't you? Feel free to share in the comments. It might do you good. I sincerely hope this video has helped you. This book really can change lives. If you know someone who needs words like these, please share this video. Stay tuned to our channel. There are many more videos to watch. Thank you for watching. God bless.